This is how one of my viewers used my guidance from my videos and successfully defeated a civil enforcement officer, the local authority, and at tribunal overturned a penalty charge notice. That's the penalty kind, not just the private parking charge notice kind, the real fine kind, and not fine in a good way. And I have permission to share with you these documents so you can see exactly how they did it using the guidance that I provide on this channel. And I'm so happy for him because this means that he's overturned this £70 charge and now feels a real sense of justice. And just as a heads up, I do have a partner for this video. More about them a little bit later because they help to support my channel so I can continue to help more of you guys. So let's take a look at some of those documents. It all started with this penalty charge notice by Civil Enforcement Officer Blank. Obviously, the documents will all be redacted, but you'll still get the point. The Civil Enforcement Officer said they had reason to believe that the following contravention occurred and that a penalty charge was now payable. Parked in a residence or shared use parking place or zone without clearly displaying either a permit or voucher or pay and display ticket issued for that place. Code 12. Time and date of the location, the registration, the make of the vehicle. And it says the vehicle was first seen at 1045, then again at 1052. Contravention was observed and the PCN was served. The penalty charge of £70 is now payable and must be paid not later than the last day of the period of 28 days beginning with the date on which this PCN was served. Uh, it will be reduced by 50% to £35 if paid within 14 days. Now, I don't really like this um, in a sense that it sort of forces you to accept liability because it halves the fine. But if you believe you've got representations, then you certainly should consider making them. Now, obviously, I can't advise any of you individually on this channel because it all depends, as you'll find out from this case, it all depends on the specific facts and the circumstances, even if it's not necessarily absolutely in line with all of the rules. So Mr. Black, we're going to call him, not his real name, uh, filed representations against this, which we'll come to in a moment. But in short, they were rejected. So he received a notice of rejection from North Essex Parking Partnership. It says, I refer to your challenge received regarding the above penalty charge notice. You were given a penalty charge as the vehicle was parked in a resident permit zone without clearly displaying a permit or having a my permit or virtual permit. This restriction on the road applies at all times, every day. Motorists are not allowed to stop and wait or park their vehicle in a resident permit only zone unless they have a valid resident permit or valid visitor permit. With regards to your challenge, whilst I understand that you've stated the signage is not clear, which we'll come back to in a moment, where a residence permit zone is in place, there will be entry and exit signs with possible repeater signs. There is no requirement, and this is a point that we'll come back to later, there's no requirement for bay markings within a permit zone. So there'll be no white lines on the road. And this was a photograph of said sign at the outset. You've also mentioned that the sign suggests that the right-hand side of the road is resident permits only, rather than the left-hand side. Now, I'll just explain briefly what this means, because this is what it all hinges on. Now, this is a picture of the road, and there's a sign on the right-hand side, but you cannot see a sign on the left-hand side. So you can see vehicles parked on the left over here, and if just looking at the left-hand side, you can't see any signs. But you can see one on the right-hand side, and it says, past this point, permit holders parking only. Nonetheless, the notice of rejection uh, stood, and so they sent a formal uh, notice of rejection here, and within it gave three choices. You can pay the discounted charge of £35 within 14 days of the date of this letter, or you can pay the £70 within 28 days of it when it was issued. And finally, you can formally appeal your penalty charge notice uh, by using this form. It says, if you decide to formally appeal your penalty charge notice, please do not write to us again, but wait until the notice to own a form arrives. And appeal the decision my viewer did with a very comprehensive, well-written representation, which no doubt the tribunal found very helpful. And so my viewer wrote, on the date, traveling into the area, seeking suitable parking to attend my appointment, I proceeded along the high street into the road and parked on the left side at approximately 10.42. I had a very successful appointment and left to return where I parked my car. On entering my vehicle, I discovered that I'd got a penalty charge notice attached. The CEO observed the vehicle, the PCM was issued and attached to the vehicle. 
I was very disappointed that this had been produced and attached to my car, so I investigated further. After looking at the signage on the road, I was amazed to discover that the signage for permit holders was only past this point was displayed on a sign on the right, opposite of where I parked. I further investigated and there was also an entry sign on the same side of the road from the other way into the road, but this was displayed on the left, i.e. the same side as the other sign, thus demarcating a zone on only one side of the road. This was the representation. My challenge here, my viewer goes on, is that when traveling on any road, any management road orders, restriction orders, traffic signage for that side of the road is always displayed on the left, which is expected under the highway code. Which is perfectly reasonable, because when you're driving along, you expect the signs to be on the left. It's not necessarily a requirement, but we'll come back to that in a moment. In this contravention instance, I have to say that the signage on the right, where I parked was on the left, is not clear and confusing to indicate that the right is permit parking, but the left is not. I did not intend to park on the right. And so this indicates the mind of the viewer when parking the vehicle, which doubtless the tribunal also considered. The tribunal will take into account all uh, circumstances. There is some additional ambiguity with the signage too, as it states, permit holders beyond this point. Yet that point on the right side of the road has demarcation to indicate point, it is not a zone. A zone can be indicated by road markings, repeater signs and bays. If it is an area to be defined by permit parking of the entire road, left and right, this should have signage on both sides of the road. The signage should be in regulation to the traffic management orders, etc. relating to these references on the, on the grid. Uh, which indicates the left and the right of the road, yet it is only in place on the right and not on the left, as viewed by my entry point. And then he says, I don't wish to insult anyone's intelligence, however, and then goes through some uh, dictionary definitions of which definitions upon which these representations are based. And then in summary, the words used in the notice of rejection of representation of point, zone and area are not interchangeable and are not constructively used and have ambiguity. Taking everything into account, I request that the PCM be struck off as not enforceable for the reasons outlined above, on the basis of improper signage that it is not reasonable or fair that the North Essex Partnership are not trading in line with the consumer regulations legislation. And so there my viewer concludes his representations for the tribunal to consider. But before we get to the adjudicator's decision, which I'll go through in full, which is really interesting in the way that they've taken these details, picked them apart, and ultimately found in my viewers' favour, a success story to hail for this channel. So first, a brief word, if you will indulge me, for my partner for this channel. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a brief word about my partner for this channel, which is Incogni, and how they can help you. And in fact, how they helped me. Because some of you might know that I've been a victim of data leaks in the past. And so I was very concerned to prevent companies from spreading and sharing and even selling my data on in case anybody can put together a jigsaw puzzle of who I am and ultimately impersonate me and try to take out loans and contracts and these sort of things. Because we've had many people come to our firm with exactly this problem. They've had their identities stolen and people have taken out mobile phone contracts in their name, loans in their name and all sorts of things. And so, as I say, I was very concerned to remove my information from these companies. And so that is why I use Incogni, because Incogni is a service where you sign up and they do all of the work in contacting all of the companies and data brokers that have your information stored. And believe it or not, they sell it on to third parties. Now, on the face of it, that might seem OK, but if those details of yours end up in the wrong hands, they can put together enough information to try to impersonate you. And so Incogni will use the data protection law to require them to remove your details from their database. That includes the GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation for the United Kingdom, and the CCPA, which is the California Consumer Privacy Act, and require these companies to delete your data from their servers because otherwise they will continue to sell on blocks of your information because they see you as a package that they can put together and sell. And the more information they have on you, the more complete information about your interests and things like that, then the higher the price they can sell your data for. But ultimately, if that information falls into the wrong hands, you might fall victim to impersonation and somebody might be taking out loans in your name or even worse. As a partner to my channel, Incogni provide me with a discount code to give you 60% off an annual subscription. And over the coming weeks after you sign up, with the link in the description below, you will see dozens of companies coming back to confirm that they've removed your information from their databases. 
Now, some people will say, well, what if they don't remove the information from their databases? Well, two or three things happen here. First of all, they are required to do so by law and confirm that they've done so. But then if they do sell on your data afterwards and there's an audit trail back to them, you will then be able to claim compensation against that company for breach of data protection legislation for refusing or dishonestly confirming that they've complied with the requirements to delete your information from their databases. Incognia will send you regular reports as to how many companies they've contacted to require the removal of your data from their databases and a report as to how many have complied with that request. And given the hundreds of companies that are out there, this will save you countless dozens of hours if you were to do this yourself. So it's a very so it's a simple, simple sign-up procedure with a link in the description below. You authorize Incogni to do this work for you, and they require these companies to remove your information from their databases. So please do check it out. It's something I genuinely use. And as I often say, I wouldn't recommend something that I wouldn't use myself. So thank you for allowing me the time to thank my partner for this channel. So let's take a look at the adjudicator's decision. So Mr. Black against Essex County Council, the first thing I notice about this is the authority did not attend. Uh, so they didn't even uh, bother to attend to fight this at the tribunal. Now, to be fair to them, they might not have had the time to do so. They might get a lot of them and it's not worth their time to go and fight them and they just let the tribunal make a decision. Nonetheless, um, they didn't turn up. That's not to say that they will automatically rule in my viewer's favour. Of course, they won't. But uh, my viewer would have been happy to see this in green. It's such a nice touch. They put this in green. You've won this appeal. So that must have been nice to read. There's nothing to pay and the authority will cancel the penalty charge. This is because the alleged parking contravention did not occur. Now, that's an important legal point because the ruling is that the contravention did not occur because reasons will come to, and therefore the penalty charge is not payable. Let's take a look at some of the reasoning. Um, decided by telephone and attended by my viewer, but the council did not attend. Uh, the PCN was issued for being parked in a permit parking area without a permit on the road. Uh, viewer explains that he was attending an appointment. He approached the road via the high street, turning into the road. As he turned, his attention was on the traffic ahead and to his left. He did not see the permit area sign, which is positioned on the right-hand side of the two-way street. Now, as you can probably gather by the fact that I've highlighted it, this bit's important. There is no corresponding sign on the left-hand side of the street. Now, it's not quite as simple as that, for reasons we'll come back to in a moment, but that is important. The council say that there are large signs at either end of the road, which he should have seen. No repeater signs are required. Findings. The council are required to put in place signs which provide adequate information of the restriction in force. When assessing whether the threshold has been met, I have regard to whether the signs that have been used substantially comply with the traffic signs regulations and general directions 2016. Where the signs are placed and how visible they are. In a permit parking area such as this, the council are not required to use two entry signs, one on each side of the entry point, but may in order to keep a street furniture to a minimum, use a single sign only. So there they might be thinking, well, why did my viewer win this appeal? It's not just because the council didn't turn up. Now, as you can see, the representations were that there was only one sign and therefore it was confusing and somewhat ambiguous. Reading on. In this case, the council have only installed a single sign on which they positioned on the right-hand side of the entrance at the entrance to the other end, they've installed a similar sign, but this one is on the left. So they're on the same side, and they look like they're referring to the same side of the road. Uh, given the entry point to the road turning left from the high street, I accept, and again, you can see that this is important because I've highlighted it, I accept that a sign on the right-hand side would not have been within his line of sight and would not have been obvious. Had the sign been positioned on the left-hand side instead, then the position may be different. I am not satisfied that adequate information of the restriction was provided. The appeal is therefore allowed. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen, the details, the circumstances, the facts and the specifics are all important. They're all considered. And in summary, notwithstanding the fact that the council is not required to put a sign on both sides of the road, there was only one sign on this side and then on the other direction on the same side so if you drive into it, your attention is to the left. 
you might not see that sign on the right. And even if you did, um, not that this tribunal decision mentioned that, it just said um, it would not have been within his line of sight and would not have been obvious. Had it been positioned elsewhere, it might be different. So not satisfied that adequate information of the restriction was provided. It didn't say, which I might have liked to see, whether or not it agreed that the sign itself referred to just one side of the road. But nonetheless, clearly the tribunal didn't see the need to go into such detail because it was already persuaded that the sign wasn't obvious and therefore it wasn't adequate information and therefore allowed the appeal quashing the penalty charge notice. So there it is, a live case of guidance from my channel. What do we learn from this? Take photographs of the signs. You can make challenges as to whether they are fair, whether they are visible, um, instead of just paying it. Now, this is why my videos can't be specific legal advice, because you can see here, even though the rules say that the council is not required to put a sign on both sides of the road, that was the deciding factor in this particular case because of the specific layout of the road. Now, if you recall, the sign on the right-hand side just said, permit holders parking only past this point. But there was no corresponding sign on the left-hand side of the road, but there was another one on the other end of the street coming into it. And in any event, when you drive into this road, you might not see that one on the right-hand side. That's the point upon which the tribunal allowed this appeal. So I thought that was a very interesting live case of using guidance to challenge the system. Um, it can be done, this shows how it can be done. And just as the final caveat, this obviously cannot be legal advice because you can see just how that every nuance and every detail can be considered. So I hope you found that helpful. Thank you to Mr. Black, not his real name, for sharing these documents with me so I can share them with you. Congratulations to him for using my guidance and winning this appeal. And I wish you all the very best in doing exactly the same if you choose to do so. But remember, if you are unsure and you need to rely on anything as legal advice, you need to seek legal advice and you can't rely on these videos. But with that, I thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, watching my partner for this video. Please do remember to subscribe because about 60% of you don't and I would be grateful if you do, if you find these useful. And as always, thank you for watching.